Ladies and gents, welcome back. <laughs> it's uh, been an interesting couple of weeks. There was the PSAC strike that I've covered a few times on the channel here, and there's been a settlement. They have made a deal, not that they weren't already making a decent living, uh, but their claims that they weren't uh, were heard by the government, and now they're going to be paid a lot more. And to talk about this, I brought in Franco Terrazano from the Taxpayers Federation to talk about this. What are we getting for our money? We're paying a lot more. How much more? And uh, yeah, what do we get for this? Yeah, that's a great question. What do we get, right? Well, look, the one word that I want to say when I think about the entire strike, one word comes to mind. Privileged. Privileged bureaucrats who took pay raises during the pandemic never worried about losing their job and then demanded billions more from taxpayers who actually are struggling. People who are actually are making the choice of, do I get the ground beef for taco night or do I get the jug of milk to, before I put the kids to school, right? How many other people in Canada right now are worried about their mortgage payments going through the roof? Well, these privileged bureaucrats who took pay raises during the pandemic who never worried about losing their job ever, right? When you have the government hiring tens of thousands of additional bureaucrats over the last couple of years, they go on strike and they demand billions more, okay? So we haven't been able to see the full details of the, of the agreement, but one thing really jumped out at me and that's the $2,500 lump sum payment that the government's given these bureaucrats. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. What? Because here's what I, I see right off the get-go. People were saying, well, we're going on strike and we're making a big sacrifice for ourselves uh, and not getting paid. And you know, when we get back to work, we're going to have to catch up on all of this stuff and it's going to be real tough for us. Well, how does that happen with this lump sum? They're not catching up on anything. Yeah, so I'm glad you brought that up, right? You really set the stage for me, really put the ball on the tee. So that $2,500 lump sum payment, Seems innocuous enough, right? That's just 2,500 bucks. Wrong. This is why it matters to taxpayers like you. So uh, they were on strike. The large union, the PSAC, was on strike for eight days. So eight lost days of salary for a PSAC bureaucrat is up to $2,300. Just by coincidence, the government then gives them a $2,500 lump sum. So do you see what's going on here? They didn't go to work. They went on strike and you paid for it. Just by coincidence, they, the government gives them a $2,500 lump sum, which would cover the entire lost salary cost that would have gotten clawed back, most likely, for these bureaucrats. So they went on strike and taxpayers paid for it. Yeah. And it's not just a couple pennies, a couple dimes here and there. Okay, if you look at 120,000 PSAC bureaucrats, the total cost of those lump sum payments is $300 million. So essentially, the total cost of the PSAC strike was a $300 million hit to taxpayer. Forget about the wage increases. Uh, that comes on top of it. So I've been getting pushback on, on some of my videos talking about this, saying, well, you know, I, I don't make that much money. And I know somebody who works, you know, in construction and he's, he's making a killing compared to I'm, what I make. How dare you compare what government workers are making with, with pri private sector workers and saying that they're making much more? Because they are. Government employees are making more than their counterparts who work for a business. Keyword, counterpart. You have to make a similar comparison. <laughs> you can't compare one occupation with a completely different occupation, right? Yeah, Elon Musk makes a lot more than me. I shouldn't compare myself to uh, a CEO of that nature, right? But look, on average, a government bureaucrat makes 8.5% more wage comparison than the same type of worker when you control for all the other type of factors in the private sector. But that's just wages, right? But when you look at government contracts, it's like an iceberg. The wages are what you see. That's the tip of the iceberg. The real compensation, the real cost of taxpayers is all below the water, right? And the parliamentary budget officer, the government's own independent budget watchdog, not a union group, not a taxpayer group, a nonpartisan arm of the government, shows that the average compensation of a federal bureaucrat in Ottawa is $125,000 a year when you add up the wages, the shift premiums, the overtime, the platinum plated pension that almost no Canadian outside of government gets. 
That's outrageous. Okay, let me go into <laughs> one more thing. Yeah, it is ahead. outrageous, go but hold ahead. on a second. So I just need to preface this. We don't know what type of benefits were actually agreed to in the final contract. We, okay. we don't know. We don't know yet, right? We don't know. But let me tell you some of the non-wage benefits that the Peace Act was pushing for. Who knows if they got it, but here's what they were pushing for. You ready for this? They wanted more money to work past 4 p.m. Not overtime, just more money to work past 4 p.m. Clyde, what do most people call working past 4 p.m.? They uh, call it Monday through Friday. Yeah, they call it staying late. It's a thing that happens. Yeah. The job doesn't get done. You stick around. You get it done. No, you know? I mean staying late. If you want to leave, if you want to leave at 402, you're not staying late. You got to go at the back door. Hopefully your boss doesn't notice. <laughs> right? No, that's every day on the job, <laughs> Fair man. Enough. Fair enough. Okay, let me let me give you some more of these benefits. Okay, they wanted an education fund for up to seventeen thousand dollars for a laid off employee. Okay, they wanted two weeks of paid time off. Okay, they want four weeks of vacation after only working four years. They want overtime paid at double time. And here's the craziest demand of them all. They want more taxpayer money to go into a union-controlled social justice fund, which advocates for progressive public policy, according to the union. Now, I didn't even know that they had this social justice fund until we discovered it. But here's what they've been using that social justice fund to do to send members to climate conferences in Madrid and Cancun must be nice to advocate for higher business taxes, all with taxpayers money. They're using the negotiations to stuff tax dollars into their social justice fund. And that's simply wrong. Again, we don't know if all of this made it into the new deal, but that's what the union was pushing for. And it just goes to show how golden some of the benefits can really be for government bureaucrats. Well, and this is why we're glad you guys are around to investigate into this stuff. We, you know, the average person doesn't have the time to investigate into this. Another pushback that I had was GDP. The union members kept saying how much GDP was, you know, the GDP that they contributed to in in our economy. And the first thing, the knee jerk reaction to me was, but you're a cost. You're a cost to us. You're not <laughs> like you. you Where you do you just, think you get the money from? Right. It, I mean, it's it's taxpayers <laughs> that pay for it. And then your your services yeah. are supposed to be coming at a cost. This isn't GD. This wouldn't add to the GDP. If anything, it would takes it, it takes from it. But I don't know. I just wanted. to. But also, like, what there. is. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, you're totally right. OK, because like uh, whenever you have any type of government announcement doesn't just have to be government employees, but obviously it applies to to bureaucrats. Well, that money has to come from somewhere. So the government first has to take the money out of the economy to give the money to a bureaucrat. Now, sometimes, like what we saw during the pandemic, the government prints the money. But again, that still comes around and hits the taxpayer with the inf the four decades high inflation that we've been seeing, well, I right? Think, so, I think that's a big uh, issue with, uh, with people's understanding of what taxes are and where governments stand. I mean, governments don't have money. They borrow it from mm -hmm. the, the citizenry to, to pay for stuff. And if they if they print money, I mean, they gotta they, it's gotta come back at some point. You're not just gonna. Well, borrow is a nice word, isn't it? Borrow is a nice word. It almost yeah. implies like the like us taxpayers are gonna get that money back. Oh, no. But hey, <laughs> let me give some more context, okay? Because okay. like, um, we also heard we also heard that oh, you know inflation is high, so we need more money. Okay, well that well two things there. First of all, how does two weeks of paid time off help a bureaucrat afford the price of chicken? Right. How does how does four weeks of vacation after uh, working four years uh, help you deal with sky high inflation? It doesn't. Right. These non wage benefits show that it's not really about inflation. It was about taking as much money from their struggling tax paying neighbors as they possibly could. Mm -hmm. The second thing, if if we if we say, OK, well, they need more money because of inflation, that assumes that the current salary was the correct one. But it wasn't. If anything, they should be getting pay cuts. Right, because they already make more than their private sector counterpart. That's right. But not just that. Let's let's think about what just happened over the last couple of years. Yeah. Did you know that the federal government from 2020 th uh, through 2022 handed out more than 800,000 pay raises? The feds dished out more than 800,000 pay raises, folks. You know, there's 400,000 employees. So what does that mean? It means that the vast majority of employees received not one pay raise during the pandemic but when multiple. their neighbors lost their job, took pay cuts, lost their business, yeah. but multiple. 
That's insane. That's insane. How do we how do we pay for this? And who who's who's I mean, other than you guys lobbying against the government, who's really keeping the government in check and saying because uh, from my perspective, this is kind of like if, if there's a union with a business, there's kind of a ceiling. The business only pulls in so much. But when you're a union negotiating with a government, uh, the, the people, you know, okaying these raises aren't the people who are going to end up paying for it in the end. And there is no ceiling. It's just the ceiling is the, the country imploding <laughs> economically. That's really the ceiling. Well, they're bargaining with other people's money. <laughs> you know what I mean? How, how, how frugal, how efficient are they going to be? Now, the big problem, which you kind of pointed out to you, said, who else was, who else was on this? Well, I know, I know it's in my self-interest to say this, but I truly do believe that the Canadian Taxpayers Federation were the ones leading the fight against these government union negotiators. You know, whether it was spokespeople like me uh, trying to raise awareness uh, through social media, in the media, in independent media, whatever, or our supporters. And if you're listening to this, you, you should join the Canadian Taxpayers Absolutely. Federation. It, it's free. Um, just go over to taxpayer.com. Shameless plug. Uh, but look, it was us who were leading this fight. There was other organizations that were uh, talking about it for sure. Uh, the Fraser Institute did some good work. I saw the CFIB doing some good work. But the Canadian Taxpayers Federation was the group day in and day out hammering these unaffordable and unsustainable and unreasonable demands from these union negotiators. And the big issue is that none of the parties are really speaking out against this, mm -hmm. right? We, uh, I mean, obviously, we knew where the NDP was going to lie. That's right. But where were the conservatives? The conservative party wasn't really speaking out against this. Now, a few times uh, I saw them kind of pivot to say, hey, uh, Trudeau, you've increased spending by all this money and you still get a strike. Like, what are you doing? But they weren't really going after the crazy demands from the union negotiators. Mm -hmm. They weren't really saying anything like that. So unfortunately, we also didn't see political pressure from the opposition to get these union negotiators to at least come to the table with something reasonable. Well, it's unfortunate because it seems like Ottawa likes to just play politics. And they're, I think the Conservatives are looking forward to seeing votes from maybe NDP supporters or uh, people who are pro-union, who are against uh, the current current uh, thing that they have going for them there. So uh, this is this is uh, this is where politicization goes amok because you, you go away from your actual principles. And and I'd like to see more principled uh, people in 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 Ottawa advocating for the taxpayer. And I'm glad you are one of them. Franco Terrazano, thank you so much for coming today. And again, sh another shameless plug. Where is it that people can find you online? You know, just one more thing real quick. Yeah. It's also pretty hard to hammer government bureaucrats wanting a pay raise when you just took your fourth pay raise since the beginning of the pandemic. That's forgotten so right? many times. Yeah. And let's not forget that all of the MPs, regardless of what party they were in, just gave themselves their fourth pay raise since the beginning of the pandemic, right? So let's not forget that, folks. But yeah, hey, thank you so much for uh, letting me come on here. Talk to your audience. Uh, please, please check out taxpayer.com. Um, uh, yeah, please check out the newsroom, the petitions and yeah, become a supporter links as always in the description down below.